Hello everyone, welcome back. Hello and welcome back to PA Academy. So this is example one on, uh, on that video series, Mesh Analysis. So in the previous part, I, it was more like an introduction into Mesh Analysis where I talked about what Mesh Analysis is all about and how to go about to solving them. So now this example, we are going to be using real numbers. You can see we have a circuit here, unlike the other ones where we are using more like alphabets. So now let's get started. Now before I continue, if you missed the previous part of this video, that's the introduction part of mesh analysis please check the description of this particular video you find the link to that video all right so right here now we already have this circuit and we are asked to do what he said he said find the current in each mesh and the current passing through each resistor in the circuit so that means in this particular mesh we have to find the current that is what that is flowing here and the current in this particular mesh and the current in each of these what this resistor so let's go about it so like i said first thing we should do is to identify how many mesh are we having in the circuit so if you're familiar with what mesh is all about, which I've explained in another separate video, um, this here is a mesh. Okay, this, before I even show you the current direction, so let me call this points A, B, C, D, E, and F. So A, B, E, F, and back to A is one mesh. B, C, D, E, and back to B is another mesh. So we are having two meshes in this particular circuit so i haven't identified that the next thing is to do is to pick our current direction so i'm going to pick a clockwise direction so for this particular mesh let me call it i1 and then for this also a clockwise direction for our current i'll call it i2 so let me call this mesh one mesh one and let me call this mesh two so now that I've picked the, uh, the direction of current, now let's add our polarity. So for the voltage source, it's constant. This is going to be plus, minus, and this is going to be plus and minus. So the longer side is positive, the shorter one is negative. Now for the resistor, which is the element we are having, for us to add the polarity, so let's, with, from this uh, mesh one, this is going to be plus and then minus. So this is going to be plus and minus in this direction. I hope by now you should be familiar with this. I've explained it under when I was talking about sketch of voltage law and in the previous video. So also for the mesh 2 now, this is going to be plus and minus. And then for the 1 ohm resistor, going to be, we are going to be having plus and minus. So now the next thing for us is to pick each of the mesh and then simplify it using Kirchhoff voltage law. So, solution. So now for the mesh 1. And that mesh 1 is, um, that is A, B, E, F, and back to A. So that is the mesh one. So now let's start, we are starting from point A. So if you this is the first element you are coming across. So from positive to negative, so that's going to be minus four times I1. That will be four I1. Then if you should continue like that in this direction now, since this is the next one. Now from plus to minus, and then we're having a two ohm resistor, and then the current here is I1. So that is going to be minus two I1. Also for this 2 ohm resistor, we also have another current that is passing through it, which is I2. But we are going to be looking at it in this direction, the direction for mesh 1, for the current in mesh 1. And that's going to be minus to plus. That will be plus 2 because of I2, 2I2. Two I, two. I hope you get, so when you're having um, an element that is between two mesh, so this is how you go about it. So once we are done here, we come to E, to F, there's no element here. And then from F to A, we are having a voltage source, which is from negative to positive. That is going to be plus 28 equals to zero. So now let's simplify what we are having here. We are having minus 4I1, minus 2I1. So that will give us minus 6I1, then plus 2I2, then equals to so this 28. Let's bring it to the other side of the equation. That is equals to minus 28. And what we are having here is our equation one. We take note of that. So now let's go to our mesh two. So for mesh two, the, this is mesh two now. The part for mesh two is uh, that's B, C, D, E, and back to P. So that's for mesh two. So now if you are starting from B, straight like this, so from positive to negative, and this is a um, one ohm resistor, and then the current there is I2. So that is going to be minus 
one i two, so you can just write it as minus i two. If you have one year, you can try to write your one, but it's still the same thing writing it like this. So from c to d, this is plus and this is minus. So that will be minus seven. Remember, you are not going to multiply the seven with your i two because this is a voltage already. It's already in voltage. I hope that is clear. I didn't mention it here, but I've mentioned it in the previous video. This now we cannot multiply it with i one because it's already in volts. But all these values, like the one I'm having here, this is remember v is equals to i r. This is um, i i two, and our r here is one. So that's why we can multiply them. We can multiply four multiplied by i one here. That's because we are getting the volt. We are calculating the voltage. But since we already have voltage value here, there's no need to multiply it with i. So that's why this is ordinary seven, seven volts. But I can just indicate it as seven. So now from d to e, there's nothing here. Now from e to f, so from positive to negative two ohm resistor, the current flowing it is i two. That will be minus two i two. Also, here yeah, we also have another current which is i one flowing through it plus flowing through flowing through it in this uh, in this direction. But since we are looking at mesh two, that is from minus to plus. That will be plus two because of the current i two. I mean I1 rather, 2 I1 and then back to B. So there's no other element, then that will be equals to 0. Alright, so now let's simplify this. So if you are to simplify this, we are having minus I2 and minus uh, 2 I2. That will be minus 3 I2 plus 2 I1 equals to. So if this 7 comes to the other side of the equals to, we are going to be having equals to 7 and what we are having right here is our equation 2 so now if we solve equation 1 and equation 2 simultaneously so solving equation 1 and equation 2 simultaneously we are going to be having our i1 will give us alright so now that we've gotten the current that is flowing through each mesh, mesh 1 as mesh 2, we've got it to be I1 is 5 amperes, that's the mesh 1, current flowing through this mesh is 5 amperes, and current flowing through this mesh 2 is 1 ampere. So now let's go ahead and calculate the current that is flowing through each of this resistor. So we have the 4 ohm, 1 ohm, and then 2 ohm resistor. So to calculate the current that is flowing through each of them, so let's start with the 4 ohm resistor. So that means we are going to be having currents through the 4 ohm resistor. So if you look at this 4 ohm resistor, from this mesh, you can see that the only current that is flowing through it is the uh, I1. This is the only current that is flowing through it, and the value for our I1 is 5 amperes. So that means the current that is flowing through uh, the form resistor is I1, and that is 4 amperes. So it's equals to I1, and that is, I mean, is I1, and that is 5 amperes rather. 5 amperes. So that means the current that is flowing through the 4 ohm resistor is 5 amperes. Now, whenever you give the, the value of the current, always indicate the direction. And now, this is going to be the direction. Now, the direction that we assume to be clockwise, that means it is correct. So you can see, in clockwise direction, the current is what is 5 amperes. The reason why it's correct is that we are getting a positive value for the value of the current that is flowing through um, the 4 ohm resistor. When we get to the next example or subsequent examples, you understand what I'm saying. So now let's look at the current that is flowing through the 1 ohm resistor. The current that is flowing through the 1 ohm resistor. Also, if you look at it here, yeah, the only current that is flowing through the 1 ohm resistor is I2. I2. I've gotten our I2 to be 1 amperes. So the current flowing through the 1 ohm resistor is I2. And that is what? I mean 1 amperes. That is 1, 1 amperes. So also the direction that we've taken in this direction like this. So that means the direction that we assume is correct because we are having the value of our current to be positive. So that means it's correct. That means the, the current is actually flowing in a clockwise direction. All right, so now let's look at for the third one, which is the current that is flowing through the 2 ohm resistor. Now, if you look at this 2 ohm resistor, there are two current that is flowing through it. We have I1 flowing through it and we have I2 flowing through it. Now, in the uh, in the part one of this video, I said when a resistor or an element is sharing uh, is between two mesh, or maybe we have more than one current flowing through a particular element, for you to get the exact current that is flowing through that element is two things. We can either have it as 
I1 minus I2 or I2 minus I1. Now, what will determine if it is going to be this or this is you consider which of the value is higher. If I1 is higher than I2, you use this to get it. If I2 is higher than I1, then you, you are going to apply this. So now let's look at this closely. So from the value of I1 and I2, we have seen that I1 is higher than I2. So that means you are going to be applying this. So you are going to be applying I1 minus I2. And in doing that, we are going to be having 5 amperes minus 1 amperes, and that will give us 4 amperes. So that means the current that is flowing through these two ohm resistor is what is 4 amperes. Now for us to determine the direction now, the direction is going to be the one that is coming first, which is one that is more higher. So that means if you look at it, 1 ohm, so when it gets here, it is coming down like this. So that means the direction for this is going to be like this. It's going to be facing downward. So always indicate your, your the direction whenever you are uh, giving the values of the current that is flowing through each of these elements. All right, so that is it for this uh, for this video under mesh analysis. I hope you find value in it. If you do, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you are yet to subscribe, please subscribe. So in the next part of this video, which is example two, we are going to be looking at another example. Remember I said you are going to be looking like five different examples. And I believe at the end of those five examples, you'll be good to go with mesh analysis. So if you also uh, want to have more idea about how to, uh, about what catch up voltage law is all about, I've done a separate video about it. If you have not watched it, I'll leave a link to it in the description of this particular uh, video. And also if you want to know what um, the difference between a mesh, a loop, node, branches, because I'll be using some of these terms as we progress under mesh analysis and other kind of analysis. So if you want to know more about and the difference between those terms, I've done a video about it. Check the description of this video. You'll find a link to that particular video. Alright, so thank you very much and I'll see you all in example two.